Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest tonight stars in the most critically acclaimed show ever to have a man eat 45 pancakes in a single episode. From Comedy Central's Review, please welcome Andy Daly. And I understand you, you walked here through the snow. I did walk here. The traffic was so bad that at 39th and 3rd, I just said to the driver, I'm going to get out and walk. And I thought he would say, no, I can do it. But he was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'm, I'm, okay? not, I'm not good at this. All right. Do we dry you off or anything like that when you came in here? We'd treat you nice? It was invigorating to walk. It oh, really good. It really was. I used to live in New York, and all my uh, street walking instincts came back to me. I'm weaving in and out of people. I'm <laughs> avoiding getting burned by cigarettes just by a centimeter. Climbing snow piles, it was great. Wow. I'm good at this. Wow, that sounds like the X Games. <laughs> uh, now, people out there who recognize you, no doubt, may, might know you from Modern Family or might know you from, uh, uh, from Review, obviously. Um, no, but a lot, of people, Family. <laughs> a lot of people know you uh, from the CarMax commercials. That's true. You've been doing the CarMax commercials for what? How long? A couple of years, I couple guess. Years I'm now. the CarMax guy. Do people ask you advice? Do they think you know about cars? I don't get that so much as I get uh, critiques about my car. I get people, te like, people telling me, like, how come CarMax can't get you a better car? Like, Do you not have a good car? I am not. I'm a good driver, but I'm not a good parker. So my car is dinged up from high curbs and poles and wheelchairs and uh -huh. all kinds of things that uh -huh. accidentally That's scrape like, up. That's like, like being a great chipper, but you can't putt. Right, exactly. I cannot close the deal in a parking space. So it's all dinged up all over the place. And yeah, I get to pretty much constant ridicule for that. But, you know, I, it's fair. Good. So maybe CarMax should, maybe CarMax should give me a car. <laughs> There's now, a lot of popular support for that idea. Now, uh, you uh, were, you're an improviser. You've, you've improvised for years. You were, like, one of the first people sort of do the UCB theater training here in New York. And, right. and do, you, do you still improvise? I do, yes. I, I am in an improv group that was assembled in 1998 by Amy Poehler. She was our original sure. director. Sure. And, yeah. and uh, there are four of us who have now migrated out to Los Angeles and do a show the first Saturday of every month at the UCB Theater. We're still at it. What's it called? It's called The Swarm. The Swarm. It's a four-person swarm? <laughs> That's a very small swarm. I never thought of that before. Yeah, yeah, that is a small swarm. I used to improvise all the time. Uh, I used to, well, I was at Second City in Chicago, and then yeah. I used to improvise. I used to improvise with UCB and Amy and that crowd, you know, on Sunday nights, do Ask Cat yes. with them, which was a, a joy. I have not done it in a long time. Oh, yeah. How is, has it changed over the years? Like, over 20 years of doing this, are you a different improviser, or are you a different group than you were 20 years ago? I would say so. I have noticed that now, as opposed to when we were in our 20s, we find a lot of excuses to sit down. You know, <laughs> the shows used to be, I'm climbing the side of a building, you're coming out of a window, he's tangled up in a clothesline. Now it's like, let's pull up four chairs and argue for a half hour. <laughs> you know? Now, obviously, you've got review is coming back for which season? What number are we in This right will now? be our third season. Third and final season. Third, third and final season, Yeah, yes. okay. That's now, like, you don't know whether to applaud. That's true. That's true. You want to honor, but you don't yeah. want to celebrate. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I, uh, I love this show because I, I, I have said to you, I said to you backstage, he goes, it reminds me oddly of our town. <laughs> yes. Because this is a man who, like, is completely disassociated from living his life. He's reviewing everything. Right. Every experience that he has. It's sort of oddly deconstructed view yes. of the world. He is observing human life from a remove, which is hard to do while you're alive. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> But it's because he's really not living his life. He's, can uh, can yeah. you give the people like an example of something that uh, he that he has done uh, that uh, you would normally review? Yeah. Well, the show is uh, Forrest McNeil is a character that I play, and his his uh, viewers make requests of him. Will you do this and review it? And so, in our first season, he had to review what is it like to make a sex tape, and uh, he he asked his wife to participate in a sex tape with him, and she said no. And oftentimes things go awry for him. So he, but he, he had to. One, one time, uh, someone requested that he uh, review what it's like to get divorced. So he asked his wife for a divorce. He did. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That was actually in the very next episode. <laughs> 
after the sex tape didn't happen. He asked his wife for a divorce. And because it's for the show, but he doesn't want to tell her it's for the show because that would skew the experiment. Oh, of course. He, you know, it makes perfect sense. He doesn't tell her why he's asking for a divorce. He just asks for it. And he doesn't want one, and she doesn't want one, and it's a kind of a gut-wrenching scene. <laughs> So what about the sex tape? Well, the sex tape review, so, so because Forrest's wife would not participate in the sex tape, he bought a $4,000 hyper-realistic sex doll to do it with. And w what we did to shoot this, I'm sorry to say, our prop master went to a place that sells these, and he was able to borrow the floor model for... <laughs> He was able to borrow the floor model. The sample. The sample model that's on the floor. These are machine washable, yes? I don't know that. I mean, what it, disturbs me is that someone is the last person to leave that showroom every night. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you don't, but let's not go further into it. But anyhow, <laughs> this thing is hideous. I mean, the doll is hideous, and it has a snap-offable face, of course, and it, it accidentally snapped off while we were shooting it. Oh. What a nightmare. Yeah, sure. What a nightmare. Sure. But the weirdest thing that happened with that segment is that because I'm also a producer on the show and I'm involved through the editing, I was uh, watching a cut of it at a coffee shop. I'm sitting in a coffee shop and I'm watching a cut oh, of the... Your laptop? Yeah, my laptop of the segment where I'm having sex with this rubber doll and I'm just sitting there kind of taking notes and observing the cut and just kind of... Uh, and then after a half hour of this, I turn around and realize there's a whole bunch of people that can see my screen. <laughs> Is that even blurred for your edit? No, not at all. So it's just them watching a man watching himself have sex with a rubber doll and <laughs> taking, taking notes. Taking notes. <laughs> I watch that. I'll watch that. Yeah. Here's how I would do that differently next time. Well, yes. uh, good luck with the next season. Thank you. I'm sorry it's the last season. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. Thank you so much. Review airs Thursdays on Comedy Central. Andy Daly, everybody.